Hello everyone, this is John here doing an oil change on a 2020 um, Ford Expedition. Um, anyway, just doing a little um, list here of what you'd need for that oil change. Um, you'll need a 15 millimeter socket um, for the oil plug, drain plug. You'll need an 8 millimeter socket for um, the skid plate that you remove. Actually, it's more of a back of the engine, back of the engine transmission skid plate more than it is a uh, actual skid plate. Um, you'll need some 530 weight oil. Um, I would recommend using full synthetic, but a synthetic blend would work just fine if you're changing it. Um, we're doing about a 5,000, 4 to 5,000 oil change frequency because we do a lot of in-town driving. Um, that's overkill, so you could probably go more mileage than that, but I think for these twin turbos it's important. Um, you know, this is a complicated motor. Oil is relatively cheap and changing on a turbo is expensive. These uh, Vehicles, the engine oil is lubricating the turbo bearing, so you 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 really want to put uh, you know keep clean oil in these. Achilles heel of these, I think they're very reliable and dependable. But if you if you're running dirty oil, I think uh, you, you know your turbo bearings are lubricated by the engine oil, and you know if those turbo bearings they swim they spin so quickly that um, you know you'll you'll be putting a new turbo in it uh, sooner rather than later if you don't keep your oil clean. Sooner being a hundred thousand miles rather than beyond that. Um, so that being said. Got your funnel. I like this one um, because it'll screw into the factory Ford um, opening that's there. Um, but this funnel would work fine. You need your FL500S or equivalent. Um, the Napa brand Wix filters are very good. Napa Gold filters, awesome. I wouldn't hesitate to use that. Looks like to use to fit on the end of the filter, I need a 14. Looks like it's a 14, I call it oil filter, B-cap, 14 flutes, 76 millimeter, but that does fit on the, the factory filter. I kind of pre-checked pre that. Um, sometimes I'll have one of these as a backup, though. Uh, not needed, but in case I run into trouble. You always want some rags. Um, I like Costco gloves, just to put on so I don't get my oil on my fingers. Um, and WD-40 can, can be good for just some cleanup. Um, a ratchet, just a basic ratchet um, for removing the skid plate. Sometimes these electric things can be quick, but not ne necessary. If you got yourself a ratchet, you're good to go. I have found these two feet by three feet um, oil pans to be helpful. The the you can see the flow tool pan I have under the um, actual collection device. You know the oil pan here. I have, but underneath that I have a metal pan so that if there's over splash, then I don't get it all over my concrete. This has been the best thing. I mean, for years I didn't use that. No matter how careful I was, you always miss a little bit, and this catches 99% of what, what's going to happen, and then you just can easily wipe this off easier than your, than your floor. So um, those are just some of the basic things. I did put the car up on ramps today, um, just some kind of cheaper plastic ones. Those are not necessary. This is the first time I've done this, and mainly because I'm doing doing the video and want to be able to get underneath there for you um, and, and film it a little easier. But I've usually I can squeeze underneath there. Um, it's not an easy squeeze; you have to come in from the side behind the front wheels. But I have been able to squeeze underneath there. But today I thought I'm putting up on some ramps to make it easier. Okay, let's get started. We're now under the front of the vehicle. As you can see, there's the Motorcraft oil filter up in there. Very easy to get at, right on the front of the motor. There's no skid plate in the very, very front. Easy to get to that oil filter. Um, now we're gonna bypass the front skid plate here under the motor. You don't need to remove that. There's kind of a cloth one right under the motor. You don't remove that. If we pass back to the transmission, um, there's kind of this cloth one here with four screws on each side. Um, well, four screws total, I should say, four bolts. And I'll just take those out using my little device. That's the eight millimeter one. This is what you need to remove. And it's uh, uncovering really the transmission and revealing the back of the motor where the, the engine, 15 millimeter engine plug is. So let's go ahead and take those screws out now. So there's one right there. Now let's get this on here. Very easy. Here's the other one right next to it. And then there's two just like that at the back side. So 
So now I'm gonna go to the back of this skid plate and you can see there's one at that back corner and one at the other corner. So I'll go ahead and do that next. So you can see behind this cross member um, in this, this um, anti-sway bar here is, this is what I'm filming now is where the that big cloth skid plate is. You can see I've dropped it down over there. Um, reveals, reveals the transmission. And then if we come up here, look at what we see. Oh, there's your drain plug. I always look at it, make sure everything looks okay. Don't see anything unusual going on. And, um, um, oh, while well, I'm thinking of it. So I removed, while I removed that pan with the um, elect electric hand ratchet, um, I'd be careful about starting things with that. You can strip things out. And, and these are kind of these, you know, rivet nuts that it came out of. Um, so they're not that great of a nut anyway, but, and you can replace those, but still just for practice, um, be careful about removing things, um, with, I mean, putting things back on, you don't want to cross thread things and strip it out. So I, I, I like to make that point, although I'll remove it with that, I, I tend to start them by finger. I might run it in a little bit if there's a lot of threads, but I always hand tighten with a ratchet. You don't want to strip things out. And, and this, um, oil drain bolt for sure. I'll remove by hand and I will start by fingers, finger with my fingers so I can tell if I'm starting to cross thread. And then I will snug it up with a hand tightening ratchet, not with an electric ratchet. Electric ratchets, biggest use is when you're removing stuff, not necessarily putting them back on. So now let's remove this drain plug and let the oil drain. Okay, we've got our 15 millimeter ratchet on there. I did clean up this a little bit with a rag before I took it off so it's not all dirty from road debris. I have my pan and everything situated here to where I think I'm going to catch this. And then you just pull on this left and there it is. It's broke loose. Now I can take that out. Um, sometimes I'll apply, apply, I'm just removing that by hand, a little counter pressure so that it doesn't just puke out all of a sudden. I'll put some counter pressure back into that so that when it's to the end of the threads, I can kind of feel it coming out. So I'm pushing in lightly on that plug so it doesn't just fall out. Okay, I'm just getting ready to come out here. And I can tell them at the last bit of threads, I'm gonna reposition my pan, make sure I have this to where I can catch things. And hopefully I got that about right. And here we, there it comes, see it dripping, and I wanna get out of the way. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as careful as I was, I still missed a little bit. Thankfully, I had my pan. Okay, we're going to let that drain for a while. Here it is draining. I um, can see this oil has about 4,500 miles on it. Um, looks like it's ready to come out. It's black, but it, to truly know, we'd have to do an oil analysis, but I'm not, I'm not doing that today. But uh, Blackstone Labs, you can always mail it off. And you can see, I'm glad I had my pan because look at how it dripped. Even though I thought I had it in the right spot. Um, the arc changes as it comes out from, it was first coming out over here and then it kind of went back this way when I was pulling the plug, it was kind of dripping out here. So, um, and you can move it to recenter it as it drains, but look at all that oil that would have been on my floor, even though I thought I was doing a pretty good job. While your oil's draining, um, look around underneath your car, use it as time to just a little, a little visual inspection. It has to drain anyway. Look at your transmission. See if you have any leaks up there around the pan. We don't in this instance, so that's good. Look at your exhaust. Is anything unusual happening? Any dents or anything that might stand out? Check your CV boots up here. Um, or any tears in your CV boots? Is grease coming out? That's something you can catch with your eye. Even if you don't fix it yourself, you can you can catch that. Um, you know, look around your motor. Any Any weird signs of oil or anything dripping around here? Uh, in this case, I don't see anything, so that's good news. After your oil's drained for a while, let's say five, ten minutes, um, you could even pull a plug, let it drain, and then go back and, uh, in maybe in an hour. I mean, changing oil at home is easy because I'll just pull a plug, walk away, go back an hour, throw the plug in, change the filter, dump oil in, and I'm done. I didn't even have to go to a dealer or anything, make an appointment. I, I can make an argument that I'm quicker at home than uh, if I had it done. So let's go ahead, uh, let this finish draining, and then I'll put the plug back in, starting it finger tight and torquing it, putting it tight by hand. And we're screwing into aluminum here. We don't want to go crazy tight, just snug 
and bottoming out those threads and then stopping not trying to really put a lot of force to it. And that's why I like a short hand ratchet, a normal hand ratchet for this, not a big long lever arm torque wrench. You could use a torque wrench, you know, and do it to spec, but I find doing things by hand, it, I've never had one come loose. I'm gonna let that oil drain just a little more. And while I'm doing that, I move my pan underneath the uh, front end of my car and I'm gonna take off that oil filter over there. Okay, I've got the oil filter up there you can see my wrench on the oil filter and now it's just a matter of taking this off once I get it broke loose you can spin this off by hand and here comes the oil be glad you got your pan because you're gonna need it there it goes keep the oil filter upright so you don't dump more oil than you need to Okay, you can see the oil filter mounting service there. I'll take a clean shop towel and wipe around that to make sure there's no debris. Um, make sure it's clean. You don't want to put any contaminants into the motor. A special note and tip is make sure there's no remaining gasket on the mounting surface of the motor. Sometimes a filter can come off and leave a gasket um, on that, not where the threads are, but where it mounts to the, to the mounting surface for the filter. Make sure that's off. You don't want to double, if you double gasket your filter when you put the new one on, it will uh, spew out oil and you can have a bad day. Open up uh, your oil, so your new oil, put some on your finger and lubricate the new gasket with some oil. Just liberally put some on there. You don't have to go crazy, but just get some on there. And that way when you put it on the new, the, the motor, it'll have a mounting surface and, and mount properly. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and um, put that, screw that on hand tight. Now we're just going to screw this filter on about hand tight. And when the gasket bottoms out, um, we're gonna turn it just maybe another um, three quarters turn, half, half turn to three quarters turn. Um, at the most one turn, um, you know, after the gasket bottoms out on the motor. So I'll turn this to where the gasket, I feel it create friction with the, where it mounts on the plate there and starting it by hand. It should spin on super easy. And then once that um, bottoms out, I'll turn it another half to three quarters turn. I'll do that now. Here we are turning that, spinning that on. Spins on really easy. And then it bottomed out and I'll give it another, about hand tight, that's roughly a half to three quarter turn. So I double checked that again once it bottomed out um, and it I gave it just another maybe quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn and it's firmly seated. It's not crazy tight. Um, it's snug, about as tight as I could get it hand tight. You don't wanna go anymore. You don't use a wrench on that to tighten it or else it might be really hard to get off the next time you change your oil. Clean things up while you're in here. I just wiped around the oil filter with a fresh rag and there's a little oil trough down in here. Um, I wiped that out, any residual oil. And if you see any oil around, just wipe it out. Take a moment to clean things up. You wanna do a nice job. Okay, now we've uh, got our oil filter on. We're gonna put our oil plug back in. You could have put this oil plug back in before doing the oil filter, but sometimes um, on certain vehicles, it didn't happen on this one. When you pull the oil filter, it'll let a vacuum loose and you might get a little more, more motor oil out, engine oil out, but that didn't happen in this case. I watched when I cracked the uh, air oil filter and nothing nothing else came out of the fill plug. So on this particular motor, that doesn't uh, seem to matter on draining, what you're draining out, but I wasn't sure since I'm doing a video, I wanted to make, I want to double check. But anyway, now we're gonna put this in by hand. So I'm putting it in just finger tight, screwing this in. This should go in easy. If it doesn't, you've cross threaded it. So go back out. Okay, I've got that snugged up. I'm gonna wipe down some of the oil from around that, clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna take my socket and we're just gonna go hand tight. So we're, we're, we're taking it hand tight and now we're gonna um, take it um, snug with a ratchet, a hand ratchet, just a short, regular ratchet, not an overly long one. We're screwing into aluminum here. Um, we don't want to strip this out. So I'm just going to bottom it out. And now I'm just feeling with that. Okay. That's about 
it's not going any further and you don't want to push anymore that's all it's got you stop right there it's got a rubber o-ring on that plug so it doesn't need to be crazy tight now it's just a matter of taking the sound deadening skid plate type thing it's not really a skid plate it's more sound deadening material that felt stuff we're going to put that back over the engine um, oil pan here um, transmission pan that is um, just to its original mounting point so those four um, screws you'll just put in you know um, hand tight and then then snug i'll go ahead and replace that now i'm gonna try to catch this on film for you on camera um, so there's this little tab on the skid plate you got these two screws in the front and this piece of felt has to go on top of that piece of metal i've screwed that in before where um, it wasn't on top so you're going to go on top on the outsides where the bolts go and this piece of felt is going to go on top you don't want to get this all the way on like like that you know so on the sides where the bolts go on top of the metal on the bottom side and then on the um, that little tab will go on top i put this on before and got it all the way on and i was ready to move on i was like oh i got that on the wrong side which probably wouldn't be the end of the world wouldn't really do anything but might as well do it right just a little tip on hand tightening these um felt skid plate um bolts is th these are just small they're, they're eight millimeters they're not real big so i'll often choke up on the ratchet up here instead of holding on the edge of the handle that way you can't use a lot of force and i'm just going to snug that up and then you know that's that's all it's got you could also use a stubby wrench but if you got on the end of even a small ratchet you can strip some stuff out um so just when it's done snug just stop that's that's all it's going to give you um, so just had a little a little tip for for tool use there choke up on the handle up here hold it like that and then tighten like this rather than get on the end for these these little bitty ones now for the drain plug i did get on the end but i didn't use a lot of force because i have more leverage um, so just a, lo a little tip there so now it's just a matter of cleanup taking your um drain pan oil filter all those things cleaning it up recycling your oil Take your oil to your recycling center, put it in some milk jugs or however they want that handled. And now we'll move topside and put the oil in the motor. Of course, do not start your motor now. You have a really bad day, it'll ruin the motor. So obviously, I know that doesn't need to be said, but I've always been panicked that, I don't know, I, I would, somebody be, I'd be midstream and maybe my wife or somebody need to move the car and they, they wouldn't, especially if we weren't on ramps and obviously that where the oil is being changed. But just whatever your method is, of course, don't start it when there's no oil in the motor. Um, so let's move up top side and um, put some oil in the motor. I think this takes uh, six quarts of um, 530 weight oil. There's your oil drain plug on the right side of the top of the motor. You can see here's the top of the motor. You got your cover and then right there. And look, it should tell you what oil to use. Five weight 30 oil. I would use what the manufacturer recommends on these modern motors. I wouldn't try to try something different. Um, I usually take lemon pledge, throw it on a little bit of a... Uh, of a rag and then I just wipe things out while I'm in here wipe it down clean it up you're in here anyway it just takes a moment and then when you're done it'll look like somebody detailed your car if you do that every time um, it'll never be like an ugly ugly mess um, if your battery's nasty and got all kinds of stuff on there look at that you may need to clean those those up but you know don't wipe that stuff around you'll want to handle that a different way maybe you top off your uh, your uh, fluid for your um, wipers while you're in here i'll probably do that today and, and just generally look around see if you see anything out of place um sometimes i found things that weren't quite right something was disconnected or needed an attention and i fixed it while i was changing my own oil um that's why i kind of like doing my own service is i'll check coolant um i'll check maybe i'll check my air filter i probably won't today because i know that last time i changed oil i i changed it um it's just easy to inspect so we'll go ahead and Put our funnel on here and put six quarts of fresh motor oil in here after I wipe out this engine bay a little bit. Yeah, we're in here anyway. Let's top this right, this uh, wiper washer fluid. It has a uh, blue cap, has um, kind of a, you can tell it's obviously got washer fluid there. It shows water or uh, fluid squirting on the windshield. So let's pop that cap off. Um, make sure it's rated for... The degrees, if you're somewhere cold, you want to make sure it doesn't freeze. This is to minus 25, and we'll be lucky if it gets below freezing here, so we're fine. doesn't hurt to get a funnel. I'm just going to wing it, and I'm getting lucky. But getting a funnel is never a wrong thing. So look at that. I didn't even know that was uh, 
almost empty, but you can catch things like that when you service your own vehicle. That's almost taking this full container. Okay, so we caught that. That's a good thing to catch. So I just filled the washer fluid over there. I haven't put the motor oil in yet, which is right there. Um, thought I'd show you, hey, your air, air filter is right here. This is the easiest thing to do. You just pop these latches, and then this is indexed at the back, so when you pull up on the front, it'll pull out the front. There's your air filter. Couldn't be easier. Now I can pull this out. Sometimes I'll vacuum around in my, my air box, clean that out. Eh, this looks okay. Well, you know what? This has quite a bit of debris in here. I have one. I'm going to put a new one in. Look at that. Sturdier than I thought. Look at that. Have a little um, yellow jacket there. It's been there a while. And um, I mean, a filter is like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. If you take this somewhere, it'll be a lot more than that. It could be $60 to change this out. And hey, I'm going to change this filter. And then sometimes you can write a date on the end of when you just last changed it. I didn't do it on this one, but that'll help you keep track. But that took me literally five seconds to pop that open. Why wouldn't you at least check it? So here's my old filter here. Here's the new one. Um, looks like it takes uh, FA1883. So I always put in, a, um, you know, order a new filter or go to my local store and get a new filter when I, that way I always have one on hand. So if I check it and it needs one, you just throw it in. So uh, keep a spare filter on hand. Same with oil filter. You're gonna have to eventually buy it anyway. So let's pop in that new filter. So this couldn't be easier. I just went ahead and wiped out this box a little bit with a rag and a little pledge. Now I'll just take this filter and we'll lift this up and we'll put this um, right in here. Really nothing to it at all. We're just making sure that all the edges are down all the way around and they are. And now you put the back indexed tabs in first with these tabs and then you'll snap down these things around the edges, the little snaps around the edges. There's just, I think, uh, two of those. So next, snap down those little snaps. That was after I got the back tabs in and this scooted all the way to the back. There, now we have a new um, engine air filter. Clean air is important for those turbos and your motor as well. Now it's just a matter of adding the engine oil. We're gonna put um, six quarts in. And I do love this filter. It snaps into the OEM attachment here. So you don't have to worry about your funnel falling off. But a regular funnel works fine. I did it for years without that. And we're just going to repeat this five more times. Be sure to remove your funnel and put your oil top cap back in. Now it's just a matter of starting your vehicle. And I'm letting it run for a few minutes to circulate the oil through the oil filter and oil galleries. And then shut it off. Let it set a few minutes and then check where your oil is on the dipstick. It should between um, be at the desired range on the dipstick. Um, when I was pulling this on with the ramps, the ramps kept sliding as they were being pinched forward. So I just put a towel underneath each ramp and then it quit trying to scoot forward as I was pulling on. Um, just kind of a tip if, if you have that problem. Um, so with your air filter, this is what I was talking about. You could uh, make a note in your phone and keep track of the date and mileage, just put new engine um, air filter. Um, also when you change your oil, or you can just write on this air filter. So next time you change it, you have a reference. Here we are, we got a date on there. Just use a permanent marker and uh, have the mileage, 16,000, you know, roughly 800 some miles. So when I change it next time or just inspect it, I can correlate and look at this one a lot cleaner than the other one. So you don't want your engine breathing dirty air. So just a quick little tip. You don't have to do that, but it's really not that hard. It doesn't take much time. Oh yes, now we must reset the engine oil life uh, so it doesn't give you a message later that, hey, you haven't changed your oil, dummy. Um, so we're gonna go in here, um, starting with the digital speedometer, we're gonna go over two tabs, one tab to trip fuel, says at the top, and the next one kind of has a little vehicle on it. Um, and you're gonna go to engine information, just toggle up and down, you get engine information, hit okay. And then it says, um, hold okay to reset. So I'm just going to hold on the OK button and there it's back to 100%. So then you can go back to the setting that you wanna be on. Okay, this motor's been started. It's ran probably just uh, about a minute or, or less. And now here's your dipstick, there's your oil fill. 
Here's your yellow dipstick. We're gonna pull that and um, pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in, pull it out, and see where we are on the dipstick. So here's the dipstick. I've wiped it off with a clean rag. Of course, always use a clean rag because this is going around your motor. And when we put that back in, we want to be sure that we are um, not where that top level is. So I don't know if it's, I know it's hard to see. Um, the O, the top stamp is your overfull. Then there's the hash marks. You want to be on those hash marks on the top and bottom side. There's kind of a hash mark here. You can, there you go. You can see you want to be, um, you don't really want to be above that hash mark, but, um, and then you don't want to be that other hole at the bottom. That means you're, you need to add oil. So let's see where, where we're at on this. So we've wiped this uh, off of the clean rag. We're inserting the dipstick. We're going to put it all the way to where it seats down. Okay, that clicks down where it's supposed to go. We're going to pull it out, and you want to wait. Um, the Ford manual says to wait 10 minutes or so to let the oil drain back into the bottom of the um, oil pan. So wait longer than that couple minutes I was thinking. It'll probably give you a false low reading or on the low side. So we're going to pull this out. We're going to take a look. And I know it's hard to tell. Oh, we're in a, we're in a good spot. Um, we're kind of uh, between the two marks in the hash setting. We're not at the, the, the low add oil O area and we're well at the upper end of the hash marks there. I know it's hard to tell, but we're in a, we're in a good spot. So um, we're just gonna call it good. You don't wanna overfill an engine. If it's overfilled, that is bad. It puts pressure on seals and things. So don't overfill your oil. Uh, take six quarts, put six in. Um, you know, don't wanna overfill. Um, oil cap is in, dipstick is in place. We check the oil level, it's good. Um, we reset the oil life and the computer. We change the air filter, build the um, coolant reservoir, or excuse me, the reservoir for the um, wiper um, fluid. And we started the car too, and I looked under there at the filter and um, made sure there were no leaks. There's no leaks, so thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful, and uh, yeah, I like taking care of my vehicles. Um, I'll do the basic stuff. I won't do big, big projects anymore, but... Uh, I like doing the little maintenance. I've caught a lot of little things that, that weren't, weren't always caught, and I caught them fairly quickly when I was doing an oil change. So even if you have your dealer do some of the big repairs you find, you'll have a familiarity with your vehicle and what's going on underneath there, oil leaks, new oil leaks, oil, old oil leaks, and it really didn't take any extra time. So uh, there you are, hope this helps, and I think most of you are very capable of doing this yourself. And um, just take your time and um, I think you'll find that it's really not that bad. So good luck. And thanks for watching. These vehicles really are easy to service. Yeah, there's no reason to be intimidated. Um, I've had other vehicles that are harder to change the oil on, but this Ford Expedition is just really nice to maintain. Um, you don't have to be scared of it. So go for it. Hello, everyone. This is John here doing an oil change on a 2020 um, Ford Expedition. Um, anyway, just doing a little um, list here of what you'd need for that oil change. Um, you'll need a 15 millimeter socket um, for the oil plug, drain plug. You'll need an 8 millimeter socket for um, the skid plate that you remove. Actually, it's more of a back of the engine, back of the engine transmission skid plate more than it is a uh, actual skid plate. Um, you'll need some 530 weight oil. Um, I would recommend using full synthetic, but a synthetic blend would work just fine if you're changing it. Um, we're doing about a 5,000, 4 to 5,000 oil change frequency because we do a lot of in-town driving. Um, that's overkill, so you could probably go more mileage than that. But I think for these twin turbos, it's important. Um, you know, this is a complicated motor. Oil is relatively cheap, and changing on a turbo is expensive. These uh, vehicles, the engine oil is lubricating the turbo bearing, so you you... You really want to put, uh, you know, keep clean oil in these. Achilles heel of these, I think they're very reliable and dependable, but if, you, if you're running dirty oil, I think, uh, you, you know, your turbo bearings are lubricated by the engine oil, and, you know, if those turbo bearings, they, swim, they spin so quickly that, um, you know, you'll, you'll be putting a new turbo in it uh, sooner rather than later if you don't keep your oil clean, sooner being 100,000 miles rather than beyond that. Um, so, that being said, got your funnel. I like this one. Um, because it'll screw into the factory Ford um, 
opening that's there, um, but this funnel would work fine. You need your FL 500S or equivalent. Um, the Napa brand Wix filters are very good. Napa Gold filters, awesome. I wouldn't hesitate to use that. Looks like to use to unfit on the end of the filter, I need a 14. Looks like it's a 14. They call it oil filter B cap 14 flutes, 76 millimeter, but that does fit on the the factory filter. I kind of pre pre checked that. Um, sometimes I'll have one of these as a backup though. Uh, not needed, but in case I run into trouble. You always want some rags. Um, I like Costco gloves just to put on so I don't get my oil on my fingers. Um, and WD-40 can, can be good for just some cleanup. Um, a ratchet, just a basic ratchet um, for removing the skid plate. Sometimes these electric things can be quick, but not necessary. If you got yourself a ratchet, you're good to go.